All right. Good. So without further ado, this is John Day from Skyspill, and he's going to talk to us Whoa. about max scale. Thank you. So, um, so my name is John Day. I'm a sales engineer with SkySQL. So, what is max scale? Um, a lot of definitions. Uh, an intelligent database-centric proxy is one way to think of it. And this is just for looking. That's okay. Um, here, a uh, sophisticated query routing layer. It's basically something that sits between the applications and the clients and the backend database and can do all different kinds of uh, basically man in the middle uh, intelligence. It can route traffic for load balancing. There's um, <clears throat> different benefits below, but things like high availability where you can allow uh, automated <coughs> routing of operations between servers. An example would be in classic MySQL replication uh, or ADB replication, where it's intelligent enough to know how busy a slave is or how busy the masters are, and it can actually, um, if it detects that a server is down, it can actually send traffic around it. If it detects that a slave is unresponsive, it can avoid it. If uh, changes occur, and I'll go into more detail, but if changes occur into what is available in terms of just normal replication, uh, max scale can avoid sending to, to uh, systems that are overtaxed. Uh, scaling, uh, basically partitioning the load. That uh, another example would be with Galera, if you're familiar at all with that, where it's a, a multi-master scheme. I'm getting a lot of nods here. Um, where if systems are actually busy, if they're doing like if a, if a new system comes into the cluster, you get a situation where one system will pull out of the cluster or will become busy basically giving the news of what's going on to the system that's new to the cluster. And um, what we'll do is we'll detect that. And, and again, if the system is, uh, we detect that a, a machine is otherwise occupied, we'll route traffic around that. So a couple of examples. Uh, MaxScale also has filtering and logging capabilities. Um, it's released in alpha at this point, so it's not all of these things are in place yet. And there's a lot of, uh, basically what we're looking for is help going forward, hearing about what features people want. One of them um, is filtering and logging. Um, the idea is that you could do auditing with the tool. You could see who was touching what, you know, from the clients to the backend database. Um, you could eventually it could even develop into something like a firewall where you could allow or deny different kinds of traffic to the backend databases. So that makes sense. Um, that's a module that's coming. There's also an authentication layer. And the idea here is when you have a proxy, uh, there's a little bit of latency you're adding to the system where um, basically everything is coming through that proxy level. You can actually gain some of that back if you do things like cache authorization. So in this sense, um, with the, this basically, when MaxScale starts, it will talk to the servers that it's working with, the databases, and it will actually go and get a list of the users uh, and basically cache who's allowed to touch those different systems. And then as clients connect to the databases, it's caching that authentication out. So if you've got a scenario where there's a lot of connection pooling or drivers that are doing a lot of authentication all the time, you can actually save a lot of, uh, you know, you can gain back some of that latency by having it do the authentication for you. Um, multiple protocol support. Right now it's strictly MySQL and ReadyDB. Um, going forward, um, there's actually a module that, that's in place that can be extended and we're hoping the community will want to help extend this where you can actually have um, more than those protocols supported. So you could have JSON, JSON over HTTP, uh, BSON. You could have all different kinds of protocols and actually have MaxScale do the translation between the client and the, and the database layer. Make sense? Questions? <clears throat> uh, it's initially released as alpha. It's about six weeks, five or six weeks old. Um, the source code is available on GitHub, so you can actually go and download the source code itself. It's, um, let's see, it's GPL version 2, um, and it's, it's actually done um, so that the, the idea is we want to hear what people want for features and we'll prioritize based on feedback. 
or you can actually create your own modules. And that's the idea. There's a core that's doing the actual um, um, monitoring and routing, and it's actually gathering the network events and all that. Is being, um, you can feed different <coughs> models. It supports Marie, uh, MySQL and MariaDB 5.5 and later. Uh, Galera cluster and MySQL and MariaDB replication are supported. And it supports MHA. Is everyone familiar with MHA? Yeah. Some are? Okay. It's basically scripting and it's tools that will actually automate the promoting and the demoting of servers within standard replication in MariaDB and MySQL. And the nice thing with, with MaxScale is that it's, it's uh, transparent to those technologies. So it's not, it's not detecting that the master is sick and then telling uh, you know, it to be demoted and, and, and making a slave the new master. It's actually detecting that that's happening either manually or in some sort of an automated way and then routing the traffic to suit whatever the current situation is. Does that make sense? So it's, it's transparent. It's, it's basically riding on top of however you're scripting and automating those things, and then it's it's um, matching the traffic to whatever this current state is. So, so how would it discover which of my five database services is the master? Uh, based on the rules, it can actually query. It's, it's it has a login and it's actually talking to the machines, so it can see which of the servers is actually feeding the data to the slaves. So it can actually tell by the state of the machine if it's a master or a slave pulling data. So what would prompt it to uh, change its mind about who was the master after some kind of crash and promotion? Yeah, it basically, if the slave, if the master is no longer is no longer communicating, um, if there's another machine that's declaring itself to be the master, usually when they, these things are automated. You don't want to split brain situations. So even if you're doing it by hand, you're going to pull the plug on that master or make it go away so that it doesn't, you don't get two machines answering as masters. So basically by monitoring the machines that you list, and I'll show you the configuration files, how you put it together, but it'll actually you know, monitor those and then see who has what role and who is being fed and who is, who is pulling information as a slave. I have one more question sure. on MHA. Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, on the your website, Sky School website, yeah, MHA was listed as a product, and it had pages about it. Yeah. Today, it's not there. Well, can we add it? No, no. They're, they're working on the website in the in the sense that they're getting ready for. Well, this is new, and there's a new release of this and others. Their their things are being updated. I don't think it's a conscious thing. It's, we certainly still support it. We actually sell support for it. I'm, so, tech, I'm texting Mark yeah. right now. Yes. I'd like to hear, have you heard anything <laughs> about them? But it's, it's something that we sell support for. So, But but we don't own it. It's open source. Right. It's not a product, so to speak. It's, it's something that will, and others will support. It's open source. Um, okay. So. Um, these are basically some of the objectives. I'm, I'm kind of overabundant here with screens. I don't know where to look, but um, the objectives it was designed around were to be highly scalable. So it's providing the ability to grow the environment to basically, well, to, to help you scale things that otherwise aren't designed to be scaled to, the, to what this can do. Um, to be lightweight and small because you don't want to add too much latency. Um, extendable in that you can add to it. The, Basically, when they looked at this and they were thinking of this this solution, this tool, um, the model was basically the uh, the My, MySQL proxy. I think people, a lot of our our people were at MySQL back in the day, and I think they saw that as something that's been in beta for five years. Um, and at the time, it was something that that, that wished had continued along where it was going to. They kind of ran out of funding and interest with the Oracle purchase and what have you, but. In some ways, it's the model in terms of they want or we want this to be what that was seen as, as possibly turning into back in the day, five years ago or so. Um, there's also HA, um, HA proxy, which is similar in that it's a proxy. It just doesn't go quite as far as what we're planning to do or hoping we'll do with the, the max scale product itself. So those, just I think I mentioned that. Um, uh, high availability, meaning it should be highly available also. Provide authentication because that's that's a place that that we really saw that we could 
save a lot of latency and make up for the pain of having a proxy to begin with. You can really save a lot of time if you cache that. And it also lets you use, right now it's only MySQL and ReadyB style authentication, but if you add other protocols, Kerberos or what have you to that, that's a, a rich capability to have, you know, to make a heterogeneous environment not so sometimes. Um, and then again, it must be transparent to the application. That's a, a big piece of it. I'll show some, basically some scenarios that this can be used in. And the whole idea is the application, it, it's, it's in some ways part of the appeal of Mongo and the NoSQL tools, in that the developers just don't want to know about the back end, they just want to develop. And with this, on top of some of these technologies, classic MySQL, MariaDB, or Pillar Cluster, or others, um, you can actually have that wall where you just send your questions and then it takes care of it in the back end. So it's it's a it's a way to be you know transparent so they don't necessarily know what's going on in the back end, they just get their data using standard things you're already using with this in between. That makes sense? Okay. And feel free to jump in with questions, that helps actually. So. All right. Now the core of Max Scale, let's see how this looks. No. Um, it's an event-driven processor. It's, it's watching the network, it's pulling the network. Um, it's looking for uh, incoming connections from the client to the database side, um, back ends, you know, uh, connections outbound, uh, socket errors, socket closures. It's basi basically anything happening over the wire is an event to it, and it's doing something with that. So that's what the core actually is. And if we look at the architecture, I, I kind of define that, I'm going to go too fast, but in the light blue in the middle here, that is the actual core. Um, it's open source again, it's GPL, and then we have these other modules. Um, these are the five I think they were planning for the first release. There's actually four in play, everything but the logging at the moment. And it's again um, alpha. The next version is out in a couple weeks. It's kind of a, it's, it's now at 0 0.4. There's a 0 0.5. Um, and then uh, after Percona Live, and as we're, we're talking here, probably in May or late April, there will be uh, beta of this coming out. So it's moving pretty quick. At the GitHub uh, site, there's actually connections where you can make comments, you can look at the code, make suggestions on features. And that's why a lot of these, where we're demoing this, is we're looking for some features. Back, you know, looking for ideas on where to take this. So. Um, but here, <clears throat> you have the core, which is open source, um, and then there's an API. It's a RESTful API that the different modules communicate to the core with. So um, the idea behind that, part of it, is that you don't get GPL coupling that way. All of our modules are open source. You can write your own open source modules. If for your product you have a, a commercial module that you want to write, you want to sell it commercially, you can, because it's communicating to the, the max scale core, which is actually gathering the events off the network via an API, you're not legally coupled to have to be DPL yourself. So that's part of the reason for this architecture, one of the strengths. Make sense? I'm not a lawyer, but that's how I heard it, and it seems to make sense. Um, but the different modules I mentioned, uh, Authentication, um, and that is, that's basically um, caching the authentication from the clients to the back end. I spoke to that a little bit, but it's something where you can use one. Um, the nice thing with this architecture is I can say, okay, take this module out, put a new module in, and I could have my own authentication module. I could use someone else's authentication module. If I'm using, you know, MongoDB or something eventually, I could have an authentication module that would work with that and then use that. So there's, there's this kind of uh, ability to extend it. Um, protocols right now, it's the uh, ReadyB, uh, MySQL uh, protocols. But the idea there is that you can um, communicate to Mongo, Cassandra, Hadoop, whatever you want to do, and then monitor its events. The events just come in that core. They get sent to a new monitor maybe that's, that knows how to, to, to interpret the state of a MongoDB or something else. Um, you know, you just have your own versions of those modules and you can add them in. There's not a, a five limit. You could have eight protocol, mo uh, protocol modules all in play. It just happens to be that they started with five for this first release. 
Makes sense. Okay. Um, so the protocol is what lets you to communicate, obviously. Uh, monitors is the database state. It's not actually logging or auditing. That's, that's, that would be more the, the filtering and logging module, which is coming. Um, but with monitor, that's what tells you uh, that my SQL replication is broken, you know, the, the master's down. That's what's monitoring Galera to see that the node is up. That's what's monitoring a slave to see how many seconds behind the master it is. So that's, that's where it, again, is tailored to fit what it is you want to, to monitor the state of and it's extended. Um, the router is actually, right now, it's, it's um, basically the, the, the logic of who's talking to who. It's load balancing at this point. Um, but it's, it's also, there's actually, uh, I'll show you, there's some statement routing that it can do based on um, reads and writes and some very basic read-write splitting, things like that. Eventually that will be extended to do sharding and other things. So that's what that's doing. And again, filtering and logging uh, is something that will probably be out in a couple of weeks with its first version. Any questions? Okay. Now this is a little bit overly simplified in that you've got max scale. It's, it's actually one max scale. In, in practice, you wouldn't want a single point of failure, so you probably have a couple max scales. Um, they're not overly um, demanding, believe it or not, particularly at this point, where it's it's um, you know mainly it's the network interfaces can that keep up with the traffic. There's not a lot of processing going on, and what there is isn't much, and it's not keeping a lot of information at this point, so there's not a lot of heavy demand on memory. So virtualized machines and things will work fine at this point. Uh, you might have to up that as different models come into play, and if you use different modules beyond those basic things. Um, but here it's sitting between the application level and the database. Um, yeah, and, and typically you would probably have more than one. That's just a, a music slide. And here's max scale with my SQL replication um, using load balancing. And again, it's it's more for reference, I think, but um, it's replication aware, as I mentioned. And you can send the reads to the slaves. You can avoid slaves that are lagging. If, if you have a slave that's dedicated for backups, you could you know uh, just avoid it in general. Um, you can set these kind of uh, basically preferences within the inter within the configuration of what you want to do. It's only going to get more and more advanced. But with this, uh, it's basically load balancing the load across uh, 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 MySQL, MySQL replication, you know, the, the classic replication topography here. John, is it actually, is it just routing from the application directly to the servers, or is it actually handling that directly through max, max scale, meaning is it requesting from the database and then passing on to the application? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, it's actually, a, it is the classic man in the middle. Okay. So it's sending information, and if, if, um, if something is, is requesting, I want to authenticate, I'm making a new connection, and it's cached, it'll actually just authenticate with max scale and then pass, okay, here's the query, get the results back. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's actually the man in the middle between it actually doing all of that. No traffic. But on a standard select, yeah, it's in through Mac, the request in through max scale and the result back through max scale. Exactly, yes. Well, through max scale, correct. Yep. And is there any plan for max scale to provide any caching of those responses? Yeah, I, I've heard that just recently. Um, and there isn't that, that's, that's the one thing, there's, there's all kinds of different things we were talking about. I've heard that twice now in the, in the, in the last week. Um, you might have too, it's, it's, I might have been on with you, it's where it's, that's, that's what people are looking for it to do. Um, I have not heard that until this week, so I don't know if it's, it's an officially planned thing, but that's the kind of feedback we're, we're really looking for. Then, then it would be a different animal. You're not talking about a small VM, you're talking about, you'd have to tell it, basically have your own query cache. But, sure, why not? See, these things are all doable within that architecture where you've got, you know, that central core and then pluggable modules that you can tailor it to however you want. Well, 
perhaps it could just call on something standard like memcache to do all the work. It could. Yeah. The the thing too with this kind of right now it's um, it's a little crude in that it's it's the inserts go to the slave, say in, in this scenario with replicate well actually yeah with load balancing. Um, it's it's the the DML that's going to go to the masters, you know, and, and it's going to manipulate the anything that's going to manipulate data. Um, it's a little more sophisticated in that if it sees um, sub sub queries, if it sees uh, stored procedures being called, if it sees session variables being used, those get into the master bucket too. You know, it's not it's not analyzing beyond you're modifying data or you potentially could down the road, and it would be dangerous to just send you to the slave. The slave is for the pure selects right now, at the current state, from what I understand. And so, if if a client says start transaction, yeah, then presumably all future requests have to go to the same slave. Correct. Until uh, or the then. same master, in that sense, because you don't know if there's going to be updates. <coughs> anymore. Are they all automatically go to the master? Um, uh, in, in this, I think so. Uh, if you were dealing with Galera or something that's more synchronous, probably okay. not. But you get yourself into some trouble. I'm just thinking off the top of my head here with slaves. If you're updating, you don't. You don't. No, you're probably right. I mean, why would you do a transaction if you're not changing something? So. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, but 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 in Galera that might actually work because they are synchronous to a point. Um, yeah, the, 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 the caching I've heard recently a couple times, there's, a, there's definitely interest there. Um, what's what I going to say? In this scenario, though, let's see. Um, yeah, and this could be extended. If you picture this in, in reality, you'd probably have a couple max scales, two or three. You could do interesting things with multiple sites. You could take max scale down the road and have a DR site and a production site and send the traffic, you know, mirror it out to the boat. Um, all kinds of things you can do with, with this kind of boat. Being the man in the middle at that level is, is a nice vantage point to have, passing all the queries through. Any other questions so far? Okay. Oh, so so with, the, with the authentication, you authenticate through max scale, but then there's something that's skipping the authentication layer at the... Yeah, but basically it's... it's um, it's passing the authentication that you already authenticated to the database, as right. I understand it. So, so rather than ask the database five times for five connections, oh, it's him I once, and then, and then passing it back. It just it helps with the latency because you do have that extra piece of work going on. Okay. Uh, now, Galera is a little bit different. Yeah, not not all that different, but um, load balancing with Galera, it's, it's not like it's master and slave. There's not a hardwired uh, state, but it's the monitoring module pulling the state from the Galera nodes. They're all equal masters. It's just that some of them might have left the party and come back and then are now getting briefed on the current state of what's going on. It could be a new node that's joining the cluster, and, and then another node will be pulled from service automatically and will feed it the information. That makes sense. So it's not a, um, a permanent, you're the slave or the master until your role changes. It's, it's, more, um, it's more directly monitoring, are you busy? What are you doing? Oh, you're updating that new, that new node. I'll leave you alone, I'll run traffic around you. So it's the status. Um, I've heard the question asked, usually people will ask, well, could you, could you write to just one node? And then with Galera, that doesn't make a lot of sense because they all have to write you know, you write to one and they all get the news now. <coughs> um, and they're all basically, they're as fast as the slowest node, so having a, you know, a fast write, it just doesn't fit that way, but that kind of thing could happen in, in classic replication. Make sense? Questions? Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so. And again, uh, read-write splitting. I was talking about load balancing before, but read-write splitting. Um, two scenarios. The application knows. Some, some applications are written with the knowledge of, um, I'm going to send my writes to this machine. I'm going to send my reads to these databases or these machines. You can actually use this, as I spoke about, to force that at the application. Again, 
getting back to being transparent and not having the developers have to worry about some of the back end. Just we'll read, write, split it for you. You don't have to tune the application to do it. We'll do it with Max. Make sense? Okay. Um, so, so actually, I guess like a, if you have an application, yeah. usually you just say connect to database using like MySQL protocol. Right? Yeah. So with the, with the previous model, there's <coughs> two different connections. Okay. How, how would that work? Well, it, it would be some apps that will actually, rather than use even HA proxy or something like that, they will say, okay, I'm going to write to the master and I'm going to pull. So you're basically yeah, yeah. taking that tuning and embedding it in the application. So you're saying MaxCal will still support that? Result. Sure. Or, or it can make it so you don't even have to do that. Right. Do it. So hope, ideally, you know, an ideal world it would do that for you right. based on the nature of the SQL going by. Okay. Yeah, so potentially you could migrate an older system that does that splitting into something that MaxCal takes care of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Um, yes. And again, this isn't... Right now, we're talking MySQL. Um, we're talking MariaDB. This could be just as easily Mongo. It could be Hadoop. It could be a file store. Our thinking is bigger than, and that's the reason it's called Max Scale. It's not um, SkySQL Max Scale. It's not SQL Max Scale. It's Max Scale. It's, it's yeah, the goal is something much larger than, than simply a, a you know a, this community. So now we're going to talk about the installation a little bit. And I think I'm good on time. Okay. Um, so basically, it's it's uh, it's all available on GitHub if you wanted to compile it. There's actually binaries that you can download. Um, here we're, we're FTPing it from the SkySQL site, but you can go right to our site and just pull the files down if you like, or the file down. Um, when you expand it here, if you guys can see as well. Um, you know, it's, it, the key thing is that there's a documentation directory and it's full of lots of PDFs with good documentation. That's the source. Um, not much to that, other than uh, there is an update coming between probably now and the end of the month and then a full beta after Procona Live, which will be later April. So, you might want to download and unpack it somewhere temporary and bring it back after. Okay, here we're um, just showing you some of the options. Um, when you start Max Scale, um, with the help, obviously, dash dash H, um, there's options for the home directory and the configuration file name that you can force it to use a relative one, an absolute path name, whatever you want to do there. Pretty straightforward. Um, typically, and Typically, for the last five or six weeks that I've been doing it, I'll make a, um, a binary, uh, I'll make a, um, a shell file where I'll just set some environment variables and then invoke it. And the two that you have to do are um, max scale home and the LD library path to the libraries, and then you invoke it. And then it basically shows you what's going on and, and what modules it's loaded. Yep. So, pretty straightforward. A um, couple things that, as an ex security person, make me cringe, but it's 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 alpha. Um, it comes enabled with Telnet, so uh, it's Telnet access for the local machine over local host. It's, it's not it's not full blow outside the machine. So once you SSH to the box, you can Telnet to it. And as a default admin uh, admin account of admin, and the password is SkySQL. Okay, so. Um, but that's, it's, it's alpha, it's the first alpha. As of the beta that's coming after Procona Live, so later April, um, they will arrange this differently. We'll have other options too. Even now you can, um, it, it actually will store passwords in the configuration files in plain text. Um, and the ability now is in there if you wanted to hash that and, and encrypt it similar to MySQL or, or ADB. So, um, those two things, it's a little bit, it's Telnet over 4444, um, and then you can run the different commands. You type help and you see the different commands. Um, if you look here, 
add user, uh, remove user, those are referring to max skill users, not database users. Okay, so you can have different people with different rights to this. Um, you can um, you can look at sessions, you can look at, at, at different users, you can shut down uh, max scale or particular services. The nice thing with this is if you go back to that Pentagon with the different modules, I can enable and disable them on the fly. I can change the configuration and reload the configuration on the fly. You don't have to stop, start the server, or interrupt anything that way. Okay, that's what these are basically alluding to. I would obviously refer to the documentation. It's it's fairly complete because it's it's just a kernel of, of what it will be someday right now. But the documentation will go through all this stuff. Um, now the configuration itself, you'll see here. I can point with it. Um, th there's different things here. You see, there's there's the monitor section, and you'll find a section for each of the modules. So here you, it's talking about the monitor module, its name, um, servers being monitored, username and a password to use with them. And on the next screen down, you're seeing these are the listeners where. Um, there's a read-write split router where it's listening for certain things. There's a <coughs> HTTP router where it's listening for certain things. And it's, there were, each of these sections are referring to servers by name. There's Max1, Max2, Max3, Max4, what have you. Those are, I'll show you in a minute, those are in another section of the configuration file where they're defined. So it's you know pretty straightforward to look at. It mimics uh, MySQL and MariaDB pretty well in terms of sections and, and philosophy. Um, and then here you'll see um, these listeners, um, HTTP, if you see that in here, keep in mind that that's, that's for the also coming in late April, early May, and that first beta version is the RESTful API itself. Um, there's no documentation on it yet, and it will come out then. So if you're looking to look about you know, communicating, you know, creating a module or communicating with the core, that will all be available then. And that's what the HTTP listener is about. That's that's the conduit for the RESTful API. Okay. Right. Uh, and then here you'll see that the servers themselves are listed. We've got max1, max2, max3, and it's basically the type, the IP address, and the ports, uh, and then the, the protocols to use. You can use um, host names. If you wanted to, it will, will resolve. That's fine. Will you put these slides up somewhere so you can see them? Because I, I don't know about other people, but it's a little I fuzzy. Think it's a little fuzzy, yeah. Yeah, but absolutely. It's hard to see from all the Well, way. I'm going like this here. So. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll uh, definitely post it for you. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. And this is possible feature, future functionality ideas. And I, I bolded this in that I, uh, this, now we're crossing the line beyond what it can do as of now in its first alpha, and we're talking a little bit about things that come in the, in the first beta. But in terms of um, things that we're thinking about, now we've already, you know, today, tonight, heard about caching as, as, a, as if someone's interested in that. I've heard that before recently. Um, but as a database firewall, where you could, um, you could have a whitelist, a blacklist of things that are allowed, different commands, or connections or origins for connections. So you could firewall off your backend databases with max scale. Um, automated logging. Again, yeah, there's, there's lots of commercial tools that will actually, for compliances, HIPAA, um, pharmaceutical industry ones, Sarbanes, obviously, what have you, there's requirements to actually monitor what's going on. And auditing, and, and if you have the, the auditing or, or the filtering and logging, um, module actually watching the traffic and then sending what it's seeing to some sort of a storage. It would probably be, you know, another database, what have you, sending storage out. Um, is a perfect fit for, for something like that. Um, HA for non MySQL and MariaDB databases. So you could, you know, and again, working with Hadoop or Mongo or other technologies if you wanted to. Third question? Um, 
uh, connection load balancing. I, I've seen people talking about uh, MariaDB 10 supports the Spider, which is a, a sharding engine. Um, or something like Toku, you, you know, any kind of an engine, you could actually tweak that and then monitor that for health and, and then, you know, you can extend things. But one that would do load balancing uh, would really be using already sharding with the spider engine. It'd be something interesting. Um, and then statement-based load balancing. Um, beyond what's a read and what's a write, you get into things like, um, keeping part of your schema on these servers and another part of the schema, sharding, keeping another part of the schema over here, or certain tables on one system that's faster and other tables on another, and actually letting it figure it out based on the statements. Um, one thing I'll mention too, uh, right now MaxScale, the core, runs on a copy of MariaDB, and it's basically there for the parser. So it's parsing, it, 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 it's very, very good at understanding MariaDB traffic, where it's different with MySQL, that gets a little bit harder once you're beyond the basics. So that, you know, doing the same thing with MySQL might be tougher down the road. We're kind of thinking of ways to actually do that. Because you can't embed MySQL because of license. So, one thing I heard recently. Um, also, I've heard about uh, basically manipulating queries so that if you were running a query made for MySQL 5.1, um, or if you're running a, against a 5.1 machine, running a query that would only work with 5.6, you could actually um, fix the query, query tuning on the fly, so to speak, where you're making things compatible. Or a generic query against MySQL <coughs> using MaxScale to actually um, tune that so it would work with some other database technology entirely. That makes sense. Good. Questions? Why do you use the what? What are you doing in the parser? Checking to make sure it's clean SQL. Or no, what? it's it's um, like <laughs> right now it's very simple. It's it's what's DML? What is? Are you calling a stored procedure? What are you doing? And then figuring that out, they're using the parser for MariaDB. It's it's universal between MySQL and it. Sure. It's not running an explain plan or anything. It's just okay. What kind of a command is this to parse it? Okay. Um, going forward, if once you get into, you know, if right now MariaDB, it's becoming a fork as opposed to a patch, right? So once once that delta, that if that divide should get bigger, then that's something to think about. We would have someone would have to write some sort of a parser for it that was independent of the actual parser for MySQL. Yep. Yeah. I'm just these are things I've heard talking to people lately. So. Okay. Yeah. So I put this up as just a thing to think about. There's all kinds of um, I've seen diagrams where they have a dozen uh, max scales talking to hundreds of clients, talking to you know all kinds of numbers of, of Galera cluster. I know of, of people trying to do similar things with lots and lots of clusters and using max scale right now to test that in between uh, an application and all series of clusters just for scale. Yeah. You've mentioned several <coughs> times multiple max scales. Yeah. So you don't have a single point of failure. Correct. How, have you any charts or anything that shows how you organize that? Well, you put H, a proxy above yes. them or something like that? Exactly. Or you put a max scale just to, to, to load balance the max scales. Is the, the diagram? Oh, a max scale to balance to the max scale. Or two max scales. Or <laughs> exactly. More, more likely what you do, in, in another diagram along those lines, is you take the application and until we extend it so it's heavy, like if it's small enough to run under VM as it is now, you actually take the max scale and you put it on the application server itself. So if you've got six application servers talking to a back end, each of them can have its own max scale that's doing the balancing outbound. And if the application server goes down or max scale goes, it's the same machine, it doesn't really matter so much. You're taking the node off the top. So you can actually migrate the redundancy up to the application. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. And that's another diagram I've, I've seen. But I'm being very careful not, not um, these are possible things, yeah. things to think about. But that's very interesting. But, uh, sorry, uh, if you have a max scale in each application server, yeah. do the max scales need to talk to each other at all to share information? They wouldn't, uh, although, um, and this is, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone's ever, this is like diagrams thinking about what would be possible or a use case. 
Um, I think that they would have to be, like, if, say if it's a Galera cluster underneath, they would be monitoring the state of things. So if one is hammering a particular group of machines thinking that they're free, they'd have to up the interval that they're looking, you know, so they don't, oh, that one's not busy and I'll pile on to one, one resource, you know. So there'd have to be some intelligence there, but more, I think, more frequent monitoring and less frequent um, moving of the, the streams, go across the streams, moving of the, uh, of which resource that they're using. So, I mean, that's, so like at, at the current state, you basically have a config file, and you can copy that config file, and then that's how you can duplicate another. Correct. Max. Oh, in terms of the mechanics of setting it up? Yeah. Yeah, the config files are, are straightforward. You, in that scenario, you'd probably, um, well, in that scenario we just talked about, they'd probably be identical. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I could see scenarios where each one would be tuned, like this application in Ohio, would, would favor the, machine, the database backend in Ohio and the ones in Chicago. You know, you could do, and all, that kind of advanced routing, like where you're, you say this machine gets 80% and this machine gets 20%, that's coming, that's not in it right now, that kind of basic routing. That, that's uh, down the road, but not far enough. Yeah. We're just, I'm just, but we're really looking for ideas, so please, if, if you're at all interested, there's that uh, um, GitHub and there's different, uh, um, lists to be on and resources to see. Other questions? Okay. All right, so <clears throat> for more information, a um, couple things. Obviously, this is the GitHub where you can actually get it and you can see conversations about, about where the source is at the moment. Um, Skyscroll.com, obviously. Um, Yvonne Zarati, our CTO, he has a nice blog and um, something I'd recommend reading. There's actually white papers and things available at the skysql.com site too. Um, there's configuration guide, a diagnostics guide. Um, I, I showed these with the caveat that I would download and expand it, then you, get the, you don't have to install anything, just get the latest documentation from the actual code itself, or the binaries themselves. So this is, a, it's kind of starting from what MariaDB is, and it's written in C, I guess. It's, it's all written in C. It's not tied to MariaDB, although MariaDB is one of the things that's, you know, it's targeted, it's very good with MariaDB. It's very good with Galera, it's very good with MySQL, meaning it's, it's those are the first places that we start. Yeah, yeah it's kind of, you know, MySQL, you know, anything that works with the MySQL protocol, I guess, so it's not, yeah. Right. Just because SkyScale and MariaDB merge yeah. doesn't mean it's only MariaDB. I didn't mean to percona per any of, yeah. yeah. It's just those are the first protocols. Those are, it understands that kind of replication and those roles. And plus Galera would be the, the difference. So it's scalar in the same league as uh, this? Um, different, but I, I'm not an expert in, in that. And, and people also ask about uh, Paralastic and some others. Um, I just don't know them as well. I, I think where this, the closest two things are HA proxy and the MySQL proxy. And, and my, particularly, as I said, the MySQL proxy where, where people thought it might go, I think is where we would like to take this and then, and then some it seems. Right, so this makes it a little more modular, right? Like, so what Paralastic and Scalar does, when you're talking about scaling different things, so Scalar can do some of these things like read-write splitting. Um, I'm not sure if they're up to doing filtering and logging just yet. Um, but that's also a 4 pay service. This is open source. Right. And you can get help and support by paying SkySQL, but the, 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 you know, if you want to play around the program itself, it's open source and free. You can yeah. extend it if you want, where you can't really with, the other, with those other ones. Um, that being said, if you, can you go back to that slide that had the five things on it? Yeah. So you have authentication, like nothing else that I know of. Well, I guess scale, Scalar might catch the authentication, um, and it routes, but I don't think it monitors the database state, or if it does, it just kind of sends a ping query. There's commercial tools, like guys to work for some of them, you know, very yeah. expensive tools that monitor stuff in flight. Right, right. So there's there's tools that do some or all of these five. I don't know if there's anyone that does all of the five. No, right. And, and, and it's, the idea, too, is it's not going to be just five. Right, and certainly none that are open source. 
that's which is the big one. Like the HA proxy does stuff, but HA proxy does only basic monitoring. Right? MySQL proxy doesn't do any monitoring. It just passes through, and if MySQL goes away, yep. you don't have a proxy. And it's where it's located, where it's between, you know, it's said it's got a great vantage point to be doing the monitoring. It's, right. it's seeing everything between the client and the database. Hopefully. Yeah. You could end run it, I suppose. How quickly does it, like, if, if max scale tips over, how quickly does it come up and what does it need to recover? That's, that's, it's, it's alpha, that hasn't even, I'm, I'm sure they're thinking about those kind of things, but that's where having more than one gets into, yeah, it, it doesn't take long to start. Now whether you, I could definitely see the need for something that would, would bump it if, it, if it did fail to restart it. But yeah, but that's, that's uh, something down the road, I'm sure. Once we get the encryption done for different things, Do you know more about the <clears throat> like the, the monitoring aspect? Is it is it pulling and kind of like a cron job fashion of each system through the MySQL protocol, and that's how it's yeah. determining. Yeah, it's actually looking at, at um, it has a login on each of the machines, so it's actually looking at environment variables. It's looking at um, I, I, and I don't know this, but like, I'm sure it's seconds behind. It's watching on the, on the slaves, all right. So it's it's standard stuff that's always there that it's looking for between Maria and MySQL. I'm wondering if like a, with MySQL or any database, if, if there's some way of it analyzing the response from each system and having that feed into some of it. Yeah. Um, so you're saying if we're, if we're analyzing the response to figure latency and not quickly? Right. Ping. Yeah. Possibly, sure. Yeah, you, um, I could even see now that you said that, and I just, like just on, you could have an OS monitoring. Right. Why right. not? Exactly. I mean, because if the OS is failing, why wouldn't around it. Right. Well, if the OS is failing, then the database isn't really working, right? It's true. You probably you probably get a clue that way, but yeah. but maybe if you go beyond uh, the database, then maybe other things to look at. If using uh, MHA is the machine that's doing the MHA monitoring working, you can monitor that with this or something. Yeah. yeah. Or or logging the the, the, the metrics even because right? if you've got an audit log for the databases, you could take that for the OSs too. Um, I should mention, I'm thinking of things I should have said. This is, um, it, it only runs on, in terms of being hosted, the, the uh, Linux. And it's using the ePoll messaging uh, mechanism to actually do what it's doing as a, as a back end. I think that people ask to install it on Windows or other OSs, and that's a no-go, it's Linux only. So, so not BSD? Um, I don't know if BSD has ePoll, I don't know. I, I could, does it have a KPO, I think? It's like I, similar, but... I'd have to find out. It's so new, I, I mean, why not? But, um, the binaries I've seen, I think, are Linux only. I don't, you know, the pre-compiled stuff, but you could try and compile it for BSD. I, could, I can find out that question, certainly. Yeah. Right now, in, in week six, I've been playing strictly with CentOS and other things. Questions? Anyone think they have a use for it? Is going to play with it? No? Keep it in the bank for further. I actually. I've heard some good ideas. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what people call with it. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you so much, John. Thank you.